Hello everyone. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. It's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process and uh, stitch with me and sew with me along the way. So thank you guys for coming in. I see your comments tonight. So that's a good sign that Facebook is back in order. <laughs> yesterday I couldn't see any of your comments so um, I'm happy you still stuck around with me yesterday. Uh, so tonight you guys we are going to look at the Splendid Sampler to New Blocks. So it's New Block Thursday for this quilt along. It's a quilt along of a hundred blocks. Uh, it's the Splendid Sampler 2 book here. Each week on Thursdays, the authors release four more blocks that everyone is going to work on. So we'll look at those, but then I'm going to continue uh, working on the free motion quilting of our little square of four blocks that we got going on here. So I've been sewing when I get four blocks of four of these Splendid Sampler 2 blocks done. Um, I sew them together with a little border sashing in there and then I am free motion quilting them. I already have the backing and the batting in there. We did a little kitty and a little spool of thread last night. I really like how they turned out. Now we have these bottom areas to do the little flowers and the bowls. So we'll work on that a little bit tonight. And uh, I also started to do a little mending tonight. So I'll show you guys uh, my process on there for the evening. And I don't know, we'll see. I might not be able to stay for a whole hour tonight. I'm kind of babysitting the basement still, just like the water seeping in. I got the, I got the towels in the dryer and I need to lay them all out over uh, the floor again. So <laughs> uh, I just got to keep my mind on that a little bit too. Uh, so thanks again, you guys. I'm going to flip you around and let's take Take a look at these new blocks for the day. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, our basement is leaking just a little bit, um, but consistently from the massive crazy amounts of snow that we're having. All right, I think we're set here. So all of our, it's pouring rain out still. So it's been raining for two days and uh, it's um, 40 degrees. So it's melting the three minimum feet of snow that we have and three inches of ice. And it just has nowhere to go. So, I mean, it's, it's way not as bad as what other people have it uh, for sure, especially in town. In town, everyone's got something, um, whether it's like the roof leaking or the basement leaking, but I do got to keep an eye on it. Just keep the towels going. But all right, Splendid Sampler 2. Um, we are pretty far on this now. So here's my, uh, what we have done. The yellow ones are the ones that I have done and the dotted ones are the ones that have been released already. And you can see a lot more released than I have done. Oh, that's what I have. So Noeline, we have a, we have a vacuum. We have a, a wet dry vac. So I've been vacuuming up the water and then we're just trying to stop it because it's there's like a little steady flow coming in from the wall and it's getting underneath some wood stuff so i'm just trying to divert it <laughs> from the wood with the towels um <laughs> so that's that's what's happening there but yeah and then every hour or so i've been going down and and i'm vacuuming it but yeah i don't know we're gonna have to prep for another night of just letting it flow <laughs> all right you guys here are the blocks for today we got page 22 this is grandma's abiding faith uh by jill shawless and it's a nice pieced block we have not done a good pieced block well not i mean not a good piece block we haven't done a pieced block in a while we've been kind of sticking to some of these appliques and and some other things uh, lately. So we're gonna have to do a whole pile of, of pieced blocks soon, I think. Like it'll just, we'll have a big cutting session and then just get sewing. It, it's time, we haven't done one of those in a while. We've done some paper piecing, some applique, some embroidery, but um, it's been a little while for a pieced block. All right, we have Quilting Music by Jane Davidson. She's one of the authors of the book here. This is on page 61. Cute, cute. This is, uh, 
this one would be a nice, I was tempted to do this because it could be a really nice, easy, simple one, but I'm still set up for the free motion quilting and we have barely any to go yet. So we're gonna stick with that. All right, we have uh, uh, Little Things by Dawn Hess. I'm not quite sure if that's how you pronounce uh, her name. I should look that up beforehand. It's Dawn Hess Little Things. It's on page 96. This is awfully pretty. So this has, uh, this would be a really fun one to needle turn applique because this looks needle turned. Um, how you can see it kind of like the pieces, the applique pieces almost look like they're floating off the um, background. That's a, a neat effect that you get with needle turn applique and it's just really cute. Oh, and it's got some, some embroidery in there for the leaves. All sorts of pretty fun stuff on that one. This one is a, if we did this one um, with needle turn, this one would be one that it would take us a little bit of, of a while. So <laughs> we'll do this one when we feel like hunkering down on doing uh, one block for a while. <laughs> oh, and then this one. I thought this one was just adorable too. This is Happy Willow by Jennifer Gaston. This is on page 112. So there's two, it's shown with a couple colorways and look how pretty that red is with the, the light color. That's kind of neat. Um, for ours, we'll use the white background just because we're using the white background on all of my blocks, but that is just so pretty. So it looks like this one might be, might have a few foundation paper piecing um, sets and it looks like like this chunk, these corners up here look like it's paper piecing. Uh, maybe it's all paper piecing. Um, so, but this looks like, if this is paper piecing, it looks like a fairly simple um, paper piecing project. So that one um, should go relatively quick, I think. All right, so those are the four new blocks for this week and we will eventually get to them. <laughs> uh, I've just been doing a lot of, um, skipping over blocks, they're being released so quickly uh, this time around that I just cannot keep up with them. So we're just working on a block and finishing them. And we've been taking a little bit of a hiatus kind of because we got a bunch of these built up. Like we got, we got 16, actually 18 of these um, built up and it was time to start sewing them together again. So I have two, I have two loners still. So these, these, oh no, I have three. So we must have done uh, um, 19 blocks. So I have three uh, loner blocks here. I'm just waiting for one more to get done and then we can sew these into uh, one of these four patches as well. Well, this is our last one that we've prepped to keep it together or to, um, uh, to do the quilt as you go, the sewing, the free motion quilting. Uh, so we will just uh, finish that up all right, but before we started, I wanted to show you guys, um, oop, geez, my thing's being weird tonight. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Okay, hopefully that keeps us there. <laughs> All right, so I started mending uh, my husband's shirt. So he has this shirt, it's just a simple, whatever shirt and look, look at this hole here. Um, it's kind of this weird double layer thing. And actually the other elbow is the one that I started uh, mending, but see how it has this run? It's running all the way down to here and it's really big. And so I cut out that hole and then I traced it onto some other, uh, an old uh, green t-shirt that he was throwing away. So here's, here's the new sleeve on, on this side. <laughs> the crazy, crazy mending that I'm doing right now. Um, so like I said, it was this big was like the damage on this side. It's such an oddball shape. So I, I had, uh, he had some t-shirts that he was gonna throw out and I just hadn't done it yet. And one was green. So I, I picked that up and uh, I made sure that the stretch was going in the same direction, the knit was going in the same direction, and then I cut out the new piece and just stuck it underneath. And I've just been doing just a little running stitch around. I'm gonna go twice around um, and I'm, I'm almost done here. And that's gonna be that, tying it off. And <laughs> so that's gonna be one, 
one sleeve. So then he'll have one of his favorite shirts back <laughs> without a giant hole in it. And um, so I just got to do this side as well. There's some smaller holes, uh, smaller little patchy holes that I could fix. Oh, this is getting really grungy down here too. But I think I'm going to just leave. Uh, I could do this one maybe. I'm going to maybe just leave them and just deal with these these elbows for now though, but I am really happy with that. I, it's totally weird looking, but it's going to be just as soft and bendy as the older shirt. And you know, the shirts that he likes, he keeps wearing, uh, wearing them out. So I thought I'd try and fix it. <laughs> and, it'd be, and it was a fun thing to just putz around with tonight. All right. So you guys, we got this section and this section to do yet. I think I'm going to start with these shells. And here is... Uh, my plan on that, I want to just trace, just stitch in the ditch, I want to just trace these shells, but I'm going to add one more, like an invisible shell right here to make it bleed into this, this block here, because we've been kind of doing that, uh, kind of crossing over blocks a little bit here. So we're going to go one more there, and then I'm going to trail back up and then hit this one, like do the other half of this one. Boop, 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 and then this one will just stop right there. Um, I do want to trace these flowers, so maybe once we get to this bloop, we'll trace this flower. I think we'll go around the middle as well, just kind of how we trace the kitty right on the stitch lines. You can see on the other side we we stitched right on the embroidery basically to get that same shape, and I like I like where that is going. Oh, Leah, it's so early for you. Um, so then we'll just keep going like that, and then we'll do that echo how we echoed around our shapes, like at the half inch and then a quarter inch. Let's do that again. Um, and then maybe we'll fill in the shape if we're over there and, and whatever. And then, then we'll go and move on to this. And I actually might leave this one for tomorrow because like I said, I got to check on this stupid basement again uh, a little bit later. Uh, I know some people like um, uh, one of my friends commented on on the post that I, where I talked about the basement the other day, um, where we were chipping ice away, and she said that her, her bathroom was leaking, the ceiling was leaking, because we have ice dams in the, in the, um, like everyone does, every, every single person in town has these right now, uh, ice dams are where, uh, ice melts in, Oh gosh, what is that called? The gutters on the on the roof, um, and uh, you, you yeah. something that helps stopping it is is um, that you can uh, if you rake the roof. I don't know. A lot of you, a lot of you might have not even heard of raking the roof. I didn't know about it until living like home ownership in Minnesota. But uh, when it snows a ton. There is this this um, blade. It's not really a blade. It's just a piece of flat metal um, on a long pole, and you use that to basically pull snow off the roof. Because if you don't, right at the bottom um, by the gutter, it will melt. Um, the snow will melt and then freeze. Oop! There we go. <laughs> I'm like, why isn't this going? Um, it will melt and freeze. I think we're going to do, we'll do the grippets tonight. Um, it'll melt and freeze. And when you get all that frozen stuff right on the edge, it's called an ice dam. Um, water doesn't have anywhere to go then. Oh, something sounded really weird there. Hopefully we're okay. We're so close to the edge here. I might have to just pull on this a little bit. There we go. But yeah, the water underneath will melt and there'll be ice on top. And uh, then, ooh, yeah, trouble here. Let's, I'm gonna just have to pull on it. Usually I wouldn't start on the edge here. It's kind of better to start in the middle, but I wanted to start on the edge here just so I could get that last clamshell going. But okay, now I think, now I think I, Got enough to grab onto here. But yeah, so an ice dam, the the uh, ice will, or the 
it will melt so there's water underneath and ice on top so the water doesn't have anywhere to go. And then it will leak into your house. It'll leak through the roof or through the ceiling when you least expect it and just start dripping into your house. So that's what a lot of people are dealing with. Um, luckily, we don't have that so bad. We've had that one year, but um, we haven't really had it since. I know we have a friend that gets it really bad. I mean, this is an exceptional year. Um, we've had the most snowfall ever for February. And, uh, and now it's just all like mass melting and raining and like full on storming uh, nonstop for two days. So, <laughs> and the ground is frozen. So the water just literally has nowhere to go at all. So here I'm gonna finish where this clamshell might be. And I should have maybe drawn this, but I thought we could just wing it. So there is, um, there are some pucks, at least that's what we call them, uh, that you can throw on your roof. All right, here's my sort of clamshell. It got a little wonky, but it's okay. So I'm gonna backtrack and go up there. So there, but there are some pucks, some salt pucks that you can put on your roof. We tried that the first year we lived here and had a really big snowfall. That did not work at all, <laughs> for us at least. So, um, yeah, exactly, Mary. <laughs> uh, so the only thing that I've seen that works for people is they put actual like heating rods. It's like a, an electrical cord that they put up and down just at the like the bottom two feet of the roof, and it actually melts the um, it melts the snow and ice as soon as it falls. And that's the only thing that seems to really work. Woohoo! There we go! Look at you guys! I think that, that's gonna be cute. So we just kind of extended it a little bit so it, so it didn't just get cut off, so it bleeds into the next, the next piece. So I like how that looks, even though it's a little, it's wonky, but you know, that's okay. But yeah, so again, that's, that's the ice dam situation. I'm hoping that we're okay. We do have quite big ice dams, but I, we haven't seen anything leak yet. Um, so hopefully we're okay. This is really rather hard to stitch through. Like it just doesn't seem like it wants to flow or move. And I, I wonder, I think it's just cause there's a lot of layers of fabric here. We got, um, folded over edges. There's, there really is like where the seam allowance is a lot of fabric. Let's see, it'd be the background fabric. Um, this fabric, this fabric, this fabric, this fabric twice because it's folded over. Yeah, there's a lot. So I'm, if you see me struggling here a little bit, um, it's because it's just not wanting to move very well. And you know what? Maybe it's because this is too tight again. Let's lift this up. It should be floating. It shouldn't be pushing against the fabric. It should be kind of floating right at the fabric. My, my foot. Okay, you guys, that totally helped. Okay, good. Whew, good. And we'll do this guy. It looks like we have to backtrack a little here. Oh, this is gonna, this would look super pretty on a poofy, really poofy fabric too. Or a uh, batting, poofy batting. We have a thin batting today though. So I know a lot of you guys are dealing with like actual serious weather issues, like major flooding and fires and all that. So this is nothing, super duper nothing compared to that. <laughs> it's just really, it's just a nuisance at this point. I mean, we got water coming in the basement. There's not really much we can do except for keep sucking it up. Um, we did have it come into a different area of the basement where the front door is. So I'm tracing, tracing our little flowers here now. I'm gonna backtrack and do the little leaves. So we're making some teeny tiny baby stitches right now. I'm just tracing. All right, I'm gonna trace these petals now. And I'm gonna trace the center circle as well. 
think we'll do the center circle right away. Yeah, so we had leaking in a different area of the basement where the front door was, and that's because our downspouts are frozen. <laughs> so the water is just gushing out of them. It's not, the downspout isn't carrying it out a little bit further away from the house. So uh, <laughs> the husband tried, John tried to get, he tried to get the ice out of there, but that wasn't working. So he found a, like a, a little tarp in the garage and he took off the downspout and put this tarp there instead. So now that's guiding the water away from the house because it's just all falling into this tarp. You can actually see the stream of water um, zooming out to like more into our yard away from the house. And uh, it's totally working. <laughs> You can see the water gush away and it's not coming in the basement at that spot anymore. So that was kind of cool. But that spot near the chimney, that's where it's still creeping in and I don't think there's really anything we can do about that. All right, so I'm, I'm hitting these flowers as I approach them and I think they're gonna be really pretty. It did add a little poof to it. Uh, this is what we'll do, that big border around. Um, once we once we get this these flowers done oh man the pollen is killing you yeah that's gonna be the next thing uh just pollen everywhere all right so i'm just going up once to just get, get this arc so i'm not stopping and starting but now i'm gonna go back and get these flowers or the leaves i mean Again, I'm just tracing the embroidery. I always thought it would be weird to like stitch on the embroidery and oh, I'm ruining the embroidery, but I don't think it looked half bad. And I kind of like being able to see the shapes on the back too. So <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'll need to, we'll need to caulk around the chimney again, but we can't do that in the middle of winter when it's soaking wet <laughs> is the problem. So I think the, uh, the cement, I think, sunk a little bit and, you know, it's been freezing and all that. So the caulk did not last, um, apparently, on, on the chimney base. So now we know that's for sure a problem. And we're going to just have to hit that whole side of the house again. Ah, the other stupid problem. I'm sure you guys like hearing about all my stupid house issues right now. Uh, but it's on the top of mind. <laughs> uh, but the driveway is kind of leaning towards the house there, so it's flowing all the water towards the house, which, you know, super sucks. Get them. Oh yeah, so if you guys are, you're asking about the sewing mates here, it is sewing mates and then .com and you'll find the grippets there. They're really, they're a fun alternative to gloves and I can, you know, have my hands free. I can grab a scissors when I need to. Um, you can actually use them as a ruler and an arc as well. So they are pretty nifty. I like them. All right, one last little flower bit. Oh my God, the woodpeckers picked your chimney in now. Oh, that needs to be redone too. Ah, boo. Oh, Jenna, oh no. See, that's the thing. People have it way worse than me right now. Jenna's saying that her, her she has two houses and they're both, the electricity is out on both of them because of wind in two, in like 300 miles apart. <laughs> yeah. So just north of us in Duluth, I guess they're, or just like, you know, all, all north in more northern Minnesota, they're not getting the two days of rain. They're getting, um, it's snow by them. So they're getting like another foot of snow, oh, which I can't even imagine right now. And uh, like 60 mile an hour winds or something crazy like that. So it might be getting a little windier here now, but... For us in like the Twin Cities area here, uh, it is uh, 
basically rain, non-stop rain. I called it a Portland rain today. Uh, like just a rain that just never seems like it's going to stop. It's just consistently falling at a good clip all day long. And this is the second day of it. All right, that was our third flower. Now I just have this clamshell left. And then it's time to start the border, but let's see, where should I start that? Maybe I should wait to do that border until I've outlined these guys as well. Yeah, because that other one, the top ones I've been, these top ones I waited till both blocks were done so I could kind of connect them. Maybe I should do that. So I'll finish this last bit and then I think I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump over to these bowls and what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna just trace, well, I'll show you when, when I get there. Um, I, I do wanna fill the bowls or at least the top bowl with something. I don't know what yet, um, but there's some other stuff I can stitch first before we make that decision. Someone mentioned noodles here yesterday in the comments. I read the comments afterwards since I couldn't read them during. And uh, noodles was a good comment. I do still like just doing the swirls, or not swirls, um, the stones. Wait, that's what it's called, right? That quilting where you just do circles, a lot of connected circles. I thought those could look like cherries or something. And that would be good practice. Um, working on those pebbles. Pebbles! That's what it is, not stones. <laughs> um, oh, let's just jump there. I can just jump right here. I just thought it'd be kind of a fun, fun practice, the pebbles. I do that kind of often. I, I accidentally exchange a word for a synonym because <laughs> I don't know the the actual word and I think I'm saying it right but I, something just feels wrong. <laughs> that, that was a case. They're not stones. They're little pebbles. Oh Suzanne she says we set a record in 2018 for rain and it's still coming on in 2019. Oh it's just crazy isn't it? Oh you have an underpinning business. Your husband fix water problems all the time. Oh man. I was just saying, like, water, that has got to be the hardest, well, maybe fire, the hardest thing to manage and control. Like, I'm just dealing with this stupid basement thing, and it keeps wanting to go the one way where it gets by, you know, this wood center area that I don't want it to go to. <sighs> it's not staying on the cement, and... Ooh, I had a little bump there. Oh, we're getting way off here. <laughs> That's okay. Got a little bloopity bloop. Sometimes it just feels like it shifts funny. So I should maybe look into one of those, um, what is it, those slippery whatever things that you can put, um, the whatever slider, what is that called? Uh, that people seem to like for underneath their machine. It seems to happen for me when I have big shifts in, in, uh, um, oh, I think I was going to go all the way around, uh, big shifts in like the thickness of the fabric. All right. So I'm going to just keep doing some jumps here, uh, to keep tracing this. So, you know, we don't always do jumps, you know, it's kind of the idea, uh, for free motion quilting that, Ooh, everything's all perfectly, Oh, Supreme slider. That's what it is. That everything's all, um, connected all perfectly and not having these jumps, but I've been doing a lot of jumps lately and you know what? I think they actually look kind of nice when you, um, you know, isolate an area. So I, I just jumped into the center. So I'm going to go around the center here because these are like see-through bowls, right? So I'm going to go around the center and then I actually might continue the line from the bowl above it. So I'll show you what I mean. So it'll look like it's see-through. But first I'm going to stitch this down again if I traced, not trace, but if I 
it'd be smart for me to draw it on with a water soluble marker first, but I'm just gonna wing it. Test my skills by winging it. So here's what I mean. Um, you know, I'll outline this piece, but I'll like do a little continued line here, both sides as if, um, as if the bowl is um, see-through there. So actually, I think, let's see, what direction is easier to stitch? I don't, I'm not quite sure. I think I'm gonna go over here. I could go down this way, come back here, stitch here, and then do the other way, and then come back around. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. Mapping it out. All right, let's, oh gosh, you know what? I am gonna mark it out. Oh, your family is used to it. No, yeah, Robin, that's like I used to call, like I remember, and it took me for a while to know that I did it wrong, but I called um, Sloppy Joe's Messy Sam's once. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's the perfect example of, of what I do sometimes just because, um, you know, I messed up both words. They're both equivalent words, <laughs> you know, sloppy, Joe's messy Sam's like Sam is an equivalent to Joe I think uh, all right I kind of just drew it out here I think I actually should make it a little bit lower so I'm gonna go a little bit under these little dots here and we're just gonna wing it I'm just trying to be even all right I, I think I did it <laughs> I did it close enough I think so I'm gonna go over this is probably about a quarter inch. So yeah, we'll just go over like a quarter of an inch and I'll just use my my ruler here, my presser foot, which is a quarter inch from the needle. I'll use that as a guide. I'm gonna just scrape that along this bottom line. Oh, Robin, you said that's exactly you. Oh, that's funny. Yep, so that's a thing. Okay, wow. So this is interesting to me. Oh, but see here, now it looks like that bowl went through. Isn't that kind of cool? Oh, we can still call them Messy Sam's. So that's my mom. My mom says they can still be Messy Sam's. <laughs> I still like Messy Sam's. I, I think that sounds fun. So I'm just noticing something and we'll see if this is consistent with these other ones. But it was way more comfortable for me to go in that direction than it was for me to go in this direction. So that's something I'm going to just kind of keep an eye out for us because maybe in general it's hard for me to go this way to like you know move the fabric this way and it's way easier for me to move it this way I'm gonna keep an eye on that we'll see we'll see how that um, plays out do I have to I think I have to go back a little yeah I gotta stitch that part and now I'm gonna go across and I want to work on my stitch length and stuff too just trying to get that a little bit better but there we go <laughs> I think that's awfully cute um, all right I'm gonna do another jump I'm gonna just jump up to this next area come on and we're gonna do the same thing so when we're done I'll have to cut all these jumps again which is a little pain in the butt but you know again if a if a machine um, a mach if I was doing this a machine embroidery, I would have to do the same thing. I'd have to go back and cut all those jumps. So it's not much different than that. All right, so go back up around. So we're doing the next bowl. So I'm gonna basically do the, do the same thing. This bowl is gonna be see-through too. That's kind of cute though, isn't it? I, I like it. And the other thing I like is that we're leaving some big airy spaces, which um, I'm not really used to with the free motion quilting. I always end up making everything really dense. So I'm trying to remember to leave some open spaces too. But there, isn't that cute? I think it's nice. This, it's a slippery, so the, See, I was always thinking that, oh, why do I need a, su a Supreme slider? Because, I don't know, I feel like this extension table um, is pretty slippery, but 
Oh, I remember one of the reasons why I didn't get an, the Supreme slider yet. I can't get the feed dogs down on this machine. I should bring it in again and see if see if the sewing machine guy um, can help me get the, the feed dogs down. So if I flip the feed dogs button so it goes down, it just doesn't. Like it's, I don't know, something's frozen in there or not moving far enough and I can't, I've, I've been oiling it, I can't figure it out myself. Um, so I might have to get uh, the sewing machine guy to help me out with that. But I've heard that the feed dogs can wreck a Supreme slider. So that's, that's I think, one of the reasons. Because I know it's been mentioned a ton of times before, and I think that's one of the reasons that I keep not doing it. Um, so I don't know. It's time to fix things. Maybe I'll get that Supreme slider or that um, presser foot fixed. So, all right, I'm just going to kind of draw in. Uh, that, that was helpful for me. I'm going to sketch in at least that bottom edge. So I'm just trying to continue. We'll just do it as a line this time. There we go. So I'm going to try and trace that line. That's the second bowl. And then we'll, we'll go back. Oh, this should maybe go over a little farther. Then I'll go back to that quarter inch and go back the other way like we did here. And we'll see if that, that direction gets any, gets a little better. Yeah, I can, I mean, I used to cover the feed dogs with a postcard, but I'm not sure. Like, then I just started doing it without, um, without lowering the feed dogs at all. And I just put it on the stitch link at zero. So the feed dogs are just going up and down. They're not, they're not like shifting the fabric at all. Um, and I don't know, it seems fine. I mean, I guess, I guess maybe my motions aren't as smooth, but that could be just me not being good enough. Um, all right, I concentrated all of a sudden, I couldn't speak anymore. <laughs> um, all right, see now that, that felt good to me. So let's, let's see if it feels good the other way. So the other thing though, is I'm just going this direction, this direction I have another objective. It's to keep this um, edge in line with my uh, stitching there. So maybe that's, maybe that extra thing is making me not as smooth too, we'll see. Ooh, that felt a little bit better. Still maybe a little weirder stitch length and stuff, but Felt better than the first time, but maybe just because I was watching for it. Oh, you stitched onto your Supreme, Supreme slider and it was a mess. Ooh, you think there's a metal cover that goes over them? Oh, a metal cover that I can put over the, the feed dogs. I'll have to see. I'll have to dig into um, the accessories of this, this machine, what I have of them, and see. But, you know. I would actually, I would like to just get those feed dogs fixed <laughs> so I can lower them up and down. Um, so I don't know. It's, it might be a just bring it in one of these days. One of these days when we're working on a, a, an embroidery for a long time, then, <laughs> then I'll bring it in. Or needle turn. Like when we start that, uh, that new block that was released today, that's, that's, you know, that we could do needle turn that'll take a long time for us. That's when I should bring in, uh, um, bring this in to get looked at because that'll be a lot of handwork and I won't need the machine for that. So they can keep it for a long time. You know what? That might not be a bad idea actually. Maybe when we're done with, with, um, done with our quilt as you go here, maybe we will do that block that that needle turn applique block that will take some time that was released today. Cause then, then we'll still be getting a block done, still be working on this while this is in the shop. That, I think that's maybe a good idea. All right, I think this is really cute. Like I, I love this um, little, uh, see-through thing that we got going here. I think it totally looks see-through. I, I really like it. It's just silly. I like it. So we got the inside of this one to do yet. And then this top bowl, I thought it'd be fun 
to fill it with something. So that's this is where I thought doing the pebbles on the inside would be kind of neat. Should have done, should have jumped down here and done some pebbles too maybe, but uh, maybe we'll just keep it to the top. Um, and then maybe coming out, out the top here a little bit too. That could be neat. Someone mentioned noodles, which would be cool. We could do like a pile of elbow noodles. <laughs> I don't know if I can pull that off though. Like a bunch of little uh, elbows. Ooh, or just like squiggles. Like some weird connected squiggle blobs. That would look kind of like uh, noodles too. But you know what? I think maybe let's just stick to the circles. The, the pebbles, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, we could do really tiny pebbles. Then it would look like cereal, maybe. I was thinking, oh, it would look like um, cherries or something like that, maybe. You know what? We'll just make the pebbles as big as they come out because I'm not sure I have all that much control over doing pebbles yet. Pebbles is another thing that I um, struggled with a little bit. Oh, Don, I actually kind of like that idea too. Ramen noodles could just be full on a whole pile of squiggles. Oh, that sounds fun. We could have a little chopsticks coming out of it too. Mm, I'm gonna have to think about that. That's kind of fun. All right, let me just think that through for a sec. Do we even have, we might not have that much space for chopsticks. Do a little squiggle line on top and just fill it with squiggles. Or, or the circles. Oh, I like both of those ideas. <laughs> oh, Christy, this is a westerly Quilting foot. Let me see if I can find the uh, packaging for it. Uh, it's not on hand. I do think I have a link in here in the post for it, though. Westa Lee. Um, and it's, I think it's Australian. But it's the Westa Lee uh, quilting foot, or like ruler foot. The Westa Lee ruler foot, which means that it's kind of fat, so you can bump a ruler up against it. Um, and I actually have the decorative stitching one, which has got this clear uh, little hole on the inside. All right, let's see, ramen or, you know, I think we're gonna do the circles. Ah. Ramen sounds like fun though. Oh man, I don't know. All right, I think we're gonna do the ramen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we're gonna do the ramen. So I'm gonna just start where I'm at and I'm just gonna squiggle. <laughs> all right, that's a good start. <laughs> okay, um, now what? <laughs> I think we'll, uh, maybe I'll just squiggle back where I came from. Or maybe I think I'll just, let's, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna squiggle back where I came from and then I'm gonna travel up here and I'm gonna do a squiggle on the top and then I wanna put lines where I'll have, um, I wanna do the the um, chopsticks. We'll do some chopsticks coming out of it. So I want it like level here. So first of all, let's, I think, I think this is a pretty level bowl. So all right, I'm going to go back the other direction. I'm gonna just try and trace near that. <laughs> and we're just gonna fill this with little squiggles. But what I'm doing here is I wanna I wanna get like a baseline and I actually kinda want it to be straight. Let's see. Cause I think this bowl is crooked, you know, on purpose. So I just wanna, you know what? I, I'm gonna actually draw on this. I'm gonna draw what a straight line would kind of be so that it levels out because it's soup. <laughs> Everything needs some sound effects. All right, now I'm gonna just squiggle on the top here. It helps, gotta add a sound effect. 
There we go. All right, now I'll do just some crisscrossy squiggles in there and we'll, we'll have some ramen, I guess. And they can go in different directions. There, that guy got connected here. <laughs> it's kind of cute. All right. All right, except for I'm trapping myself, which I tend to do. All right, I'm gonna get up on this side. I like that they can take the same path a little bit. Like these all, I kind of have going the same direction. That's what I was trying to do over here, but it got goofy. All right, and now I'll just do some back and forth lines going in a different direction. All right, <laughs> I think it's looking cute. All right, um, I do want to put some down in here, so we're gonna have to jump back down here, but let's let's finish this area. We'll jump down here, do a few, and then then I need to figure out, it'd be fun to have some chopsticks in here, yet I think. Then then I think it'll be clear what we got going on here, that it's, that it's some ramen. And this is the straight up plain ramen. There's nothing in this ramen. <laughs> it's noodles, nothing else. All right, let's hook up to this squiggle. Yeah, it's harder for me to move that direction. Oh, wait, no, that was the one that I said was easier. Oh, no, that is the harder way. Yeah, so I am, it doesn't want to move quite as well in that direction, that's for sure. All right, I think we got some cute dang Robin there. It is just cute. Yeah, the noodles can cross over, that's true. I was just trying to, I don't know, trying to do something with them there. All right, I am jumping now. Oh, I think I gotta move the needle up a little bit more. So we do have a, quite a few jumps to deal with in here, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna try and get a squiggle going. All right, I think we got enough of a squiggle down there. All right, let's let's figure out. Well, I need to jump again, so let's just let's just slide it up here a little bit. I would like some little chopsticks coming out of here, and you know what? Let's just let's just take the ruler and do it. I'm gonna take this skinnier. Um, this skinnier ruler just because it's got this straight edge. It's a little thinner than my grip it. So this is like a three millimeter. Um, the grip it I think is the six millimeter, which is great for um, this thickness is used a lot, I think in rulers for large uh, um, arm or the long arm quilting. I'm gonna try this one, but I think I can just, we have a little jump in here. But I think I could just wing it with this. Let's give it a try. So again, I gotta be a quarter inch away from where I wanna be. So let's let's just try here. Oh, I think I want it on the, well, the second one could be there. Let's, let's do the first one here. See what happens. All right, so I'm gonna just go slowly up here. All right, and then I do have to jump. So let's see how well that goes. All right, that about right there. <laughs> All right, that's cute. All right, now let's just jump down a bit and go back down the other direction. It's cute. I don't think I was against the ruler for that. Oh well. And then we're gonna jump down here again. Like I said, there's a lot of jumps that we're gonna have to trim. 
All right, there's the first one, and I thought it'd be fun to do like another one. So this one I want kind of leaning up against the edge. So let's let's travel a little bit. Let's um, travel in our ramen here. All right, now this one, again, I gotta be a quarter inch away from where I want it to be. So let's go about here. All right, here's our jump. All right, and this is kind of like the edge of the bowl. Keep moving a little bit though. All right, oh, I think that's about good. Now we'll, we'll go a few stitches this way. Then back down. I am gonna try and angle it a little bit so it gets skinnier like that other one. All right, I think we got something here. <laughs> it's so silly. Okay, I like it. Um, all right, so I am going to, so this is someone who is wasting a lot of ramen. This is, these are three bowls that are sitting in the sink ready to be washed and they didn't eat all their ramen. <laughs> so it's a little goofy, uh, but I like it. So, all right, um, uh, let's see. I think think you guys I think we might stop there for the night and then tomorrow we'll work on tracing all of these these things that we did today and then filling it in so we we need to do the fill for the rest of it and we can take a look at that in a sec here I'll first let's take this off oh that ramen is, that was a cute idea I, I like that all right let's uh Let's just peek at it. Okay, it is too freaking cute. Look at it. Ah, oh my God. Okay, I love it so much. <laughs> All right, it is so silly. Okay, I like it. All right, I am going to just trim all these jumps because we want these gone before we start stitching around the, um, around the whole thing. So we have a lot of them. But I think that's gonna make it look cool on the back and we'll take a look at the back really soon here once I clip all these. We'll, we'll have to actually clip them from the back too. Here's another jump. Um, there should be one around here somewhere. Did I get it already? I might've gotten it already. Here's one. Get in there. It's not the end of the world if I don't get rid of these either. I do want them away here though, because then those chopsticks will look like they're behind behind the bowl, on inside of the bowl, not the outside. Two more. This might not be the best scissors to do this. I could get a little snips out. It does the job. All right, there we are. And this will be cute once we wash that um, water soluble marker away though. But I love that see-throughness of it. That would be something I would like to play with a little bit more. That's cool. All right, so there's that. Let's take a look at the back. Oh my gosh, look at the flowers are so cute. Oh, that turned out good on the back little flowers, and this looks just freaking so silly and cute. I love it. <laughs> okay, I'm in love with the the um, the uh, bowl block now. There's always a point where I fall in love with them, and, and I think it's in the quilting with this one. <laughs> but here, this is cute. See, so these are those, these two clamshells are the ones that just don't exist. Those ones we did ourselves, and yeah, they don't look too shabby, I don't think. Gosh, compared to some of these ones that we did do, did have a guide for. Just gonna snip through these real quick. Oh, it's so cute. I haven't had ramen in ages. That sounds really good right now. <laughs> All right, I think that's probably good enough. 
There's one hanging out here. Let's get him. All right, there we got all those um, pretty much snipped. And so there we are. So uh, um, <laughs> I like it. It's just so silly, those little squiggles. That was a good fill. Um, just just little kind of squiggles that don't really cross. But you know, like I like like this area that it stays the same shape for a little while because ramen, like that old like college ramen where <laughs> you just, it's like flash fried or whatever that is, process is, where it's all in the same direction. That kind of feels like that a little bit to me. Um, Yep, and then chopsticks, chopsticks coming out of there, out of the ramen there. Uh, all right, so tomorrow we will do that half inch trace around the whole thing. The same thing that we, what we did up here, we did that half inch uh, border, and then we did it again with a quarter inch. I think that's just looking kind of fun. I mean, that's kind of just the deal. And then, then uh, everywhere else, we've been doing this little swirl. I need practice on my swirls. Um, so that's why we did that up here and I'm thinking that let's outline these guys these two down here and let's just continue Let's fill in all the little spaces with swirls um, Just have a consistent background and see how that looks. We haven't really done that like a consistent all over all over background. Oh, geez Oops, sorry you guys. Okay, there we are. We're back here. <laughs> My phone's being super dodgy today the stand for this. Ah! I might just have to hold you guys there, but I wanted to back up to show you um, a little bit farther away. But yeah, here you can see the border really well. And then on the back, this is what it'll look like. You'll be able to, it'll pop off of it, and then it'll have this detailed background. So that's, that's I think, the look. So we'll do the same down here. Trace, and then fill. So that is tomorrow. Um, but, uh, thanks again, you guys, for coming tonight. I really like how this is looking, <laughs> this silly ramen. Okay, I'm gonna flip you around, and we'll call it an evening. All right, hello, hello. Oh, yeah, it's like, it's like vermicelli, for sure. Okay, I'm gonna have to fix this tonight, you guys, because this is getting crazy. Stay. All right, anyway, <laughs> here we are from... Um, like a person size. It's always interesting, I think, to see it next to a person because um, it just gives you a sense of size a whole lot better. There you can see in the light the ramen or, or vermicelli. Oh, here, look at those bowls. Like, it really does look like clear bowls within bowls. That's just fun. Okay. Totally in love. <laughs> All right. Oh, thanks, Barbara. Yep, I'll be headed headed down to the basement now to check on that. Uh, suck up the stream of water again and get some more towels and check it again in an hour or so. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> I have more towels now. They're from the dryer um, to put there. So we're, we're back in stock. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, you guys. I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. And I'll be back here tomorrow doing some free motion quilting. We're going to finish this up tomorrow. And that means next week we'll be able to do the actual quilt as you go process where we start uh, where we trim these blocks and we sew them together and we are going to like magically have a finished quilt in no time. It, I'm so excited for it. All right. Have a great evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.